a giant fly, enormous monsters in the shape of a fly, used as beasts of war by the tame canyon elves. Giant flies feast on rotting forest detritus and grow three times larger than the average dwarf. Giant monarch butterfly, an enormous monster in the shape of a butterfly. Their erratic flight patterns and bright colorations make for a dizzying spectacle. Rumor has it that their long proboscis can be used to suck the brains from their targets. Though such a grisly sight has never been reported, thankfully. and welcome back once again to Idrath Kor Irol Sazir, Northbridge. Right now it's the 16th of Opal, midwinter of 113, and we are under attack. As you just saw, a couple elephants from the Tame Canyon Elves just came running into our front gates, but were easily repelled by our dwarves, which you can see are all assembled here. Nothing is getting in through our main gate. I can guarantee that much. What is a little concerning, however, are the sheer number of elves mounted on Bugback over here in the west. Now, they're not coming in very swiftly. They did move in briefly when Curse Crag went running out, but then they kind of stopped. I am a little wary about sending all of my dwarves out, just because these are big creatures, and they're flying too. That will make them very difficult for our dwarves to hit, even if we would ultimately squash the bugs like, well, bugs. It just adds that extra layer of complexity to the situation. Yeah, these guys aren't moving at all. They're kind of just... Do you think they're defending the woodland? It's almost like they're creating a barrier between us and the woods over to the west. Hmm. <laughs> well, we're going to have to end up teaching them what's what. Obviously. We can't keep dealing with this. So, dwarves, what do you think? Time to move out? We have to show those elves that Northbridge isn't a place worth their trouble. To come to Northbridge means only death for the elves. All right, here we go. Keep it tight, dwarves. Also just occurred to me that there could be more ambushes out here. I'm really hoping there isn't, obviously. Just stay frosty, you bearded bastards. We have the Salt Bridge Squad and the Anvil Squad now. 20 dwarves, all armed and armored, with spears primarily. Rather, I should say only. All masterwork, too. It's quite stunning. It looks like we have an elf up here, an elf bowman on a fly. Not firing. I don't know what the tactics are of the elves, what they're trying to do. Just watching like a creep up here. Our dwarves are over on the bridge, but this elf doesn't seem to have any interest in coming down to us. Well, how the hell are we going to fight them if we can't reach them? Yeah, elves, you really got to review your tactics. I'm not sure what's going on here. Well, dwarves, what do you think? Let's uh, move on for now. Maybe we can knock a few of those other bastards out. Just keeping an eye over here, there is a butterfly, and oh, there's a giant fly moving in too. But it was easily knocked out of the air. Yeah, these bugs don't stand a chance if they come down to our level. Well, we could try moving a little farther, right? Oh, there certainly are more elves out here. Sneaky bastards, more elephants too. That's what I was most concerned about, frankly. Oh, there's a lot more elephants too. Just hang in there, dwarves. Keep fighting, push through the horde. those miserable bastards out of here. This is our fortress, damn it. You were fools to come here. And only now in death do you see that. Foolish elves. Well, it looks to be about it, really. Surprising we pulled through so well. Very little trouble, actually. Or perhaps I spoke too soon. We have some trouble down here with one of our new recruits, Vukar, part of the Anvil squad. Looks like this elf here must have caught him off guard. Vukar is exhausted and terribly wounded, but... Here come his comrades. 
Easy enough. Ah, oh, damn it. I think he's gonna pull through, but not as part of our military. We have to try to get him out of here. Poor fella. Hang in there, buddy. Well, I suppose at this point, having a little survey of the battlefield here, I'd have to say it's pretty much over. We do still have a few straggler bugs up in the skies, but I don't think they'll be giving us much trouble. We'll keep the warriors stationed out here for a little longer, just in case. Well, with that in mind, what do you say, dwarves? We still have an awful lot of work to do while the sea is frozen. Not that we ever stopped, I suppose. <laughs> here, let's have a look. Actually, right now we're at the meeting hall, and we have these two tunnels leading up to the north now. And those lead to our new workshop pavilion. Slash tower, slash quarters, I, I don't know. Anyways, it's right here. And through that elven siege right now, we've been hard at work, as surely you can see. It's a bit snowy still. Gotta get a new roof up. But you can see this floor right here is, well, it's, it's almost complete. Gonna zoom in a bit. And here we can see it. Now there's nothing above this level here, but if we go down, you can see that this tower is going to be one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine levels tall so far. And right now it's all hollowed out. We're just getting that wall put up so the ocean can't get in when it thaws, which hopefully we could do in time. I think we can. Well, let's have a watch. Right now it is the fifth of obsidian, late winter. And remember, the sea thaws on the 11th, typically. Still got a few days left, and I think I have confidence that we can get it done in time. It's just this one level here left. Sixth of Obsidian. Come on, dwarves, we can do this. The seventh of Obsidian. Just a couple blocks left. Eighth of Obsidian. We're also trying to get rid of some of these staircases in here. They're made of ice. They'll turn back to water. Ninth of Obsidian. And you can see we've dug a little moat around the outside of this structure, just so we can have that water around it. A little extra protection, you know. Tenth of Obsidian now. Come on, I gotta get this one damn block in place. Let's go, whichever one of you has it. And... There we go. Okay, wonderful work, dwarves. Right on the 11th, too. I think we should be good to go here. Let's watch. There we go. Awesome. Great work, dwarves. Really, it's an impressive feat to have gotten that done in just one winter like that. It's a big structure, but we still have a lot to do with it. Gotta put a floor on each level, plan up guild halls, workspaces. Yeah, there's a lot. It's fine though, this was a difficult part. Now then, my dwarves, with the distraction of the elves and the construction of that pavilion tower out of the way, I think it's time we reassess what we're doing here. We spent a long time working this past year, building up our tower mostly, and we are still hard at it, so I think we're going to work through the rest of this month here. We're halfway through Obsidian now, but after that, next year, 114, I think we're going to try to take it a little easy. The dwarves need it. They have not had a second to think for a year at least. Now then, on our list of things to do, immediate concerns. Uh, we don't have any drinks right now, which is terrible. The dwarves have been drinking out of the water in the well down underground. Super shameful. So we have everybody on the duty of going outside and collecting plants right now. Luckily, there's plenty out there. It shouldn't be a problem to get some. Bring them in. Brew them up. Shouldn't take too long, I'd imagine, either. We're going to scour the entire forest, and we have all dwarves on deck for this. On top of that, I'm looking at our kitchen here, and I was just going to roof up those two tunnels up to the north there. But if we have a look over at them, they are pretty wide. I think we're going to make that tunnel there two levels tall. And this whole semicircular U shape over here, we're going to turn that into additional food storage or maybe just put empty barrels in there or something. It'd be a shame to waste space on the bridge, you know? That'll work out fine. You'll be happy to know that we've been busy this past year trying to get the entire western side of the bridge furnished for our dwarves. And at this point, it is now pretty much complete. Everyone has a nice chambers specifically suited to their needs. And we started with the most crabby dwarves in the fortress, which tended to be either fighting dwarves or the children, oddly enough. I don't know why they'd be crabby. I suppose that's what happens when you grow up spoiled. They don't know rough living, like the early days here in Northbridge. But that's fine. They could be spoiled. They deserve to be spoiled. Idrath watches over us after all. But uh, yeah, we're looking pretty good over here. That's 30 fully furnished bedrooms. Not too shabby. Now we have to start working over on the eastern side too. I think that's going to be one of our concerns for this next year. It will be a hassle, but you gotta do it. You just gotta. 
Note too that we've kind of run out of gems. We've had a spectacular amount, but we're kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel now. And so while we don't have any gems for the windows in these lower chambers here, we should shortly. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Up here in our tower, we, we removed a bunch of the gems that were in the windows already. We don't have any religious orders to go in these areas quite yet, so we figured we'd just repurpose them for bedrooms, get our dwarves situated. Priorities, you know. We'll get gems for these rooms at some point. No worries there. And actually, if you look down over here, um, we need a new temple put in place, and we are already making steps to get that done. We're going to put a temple in this eastern chamber here, next to the Order of Silver's temple. This is going to be a temple for the Doctrine of Silver, an offshoot of the Idrath religion. It has about 10 worshippers in the fortress right now, and that's enough to grant them their own temple. We're going to make it out of magnetite, I think, and silver too. The Order of Silver's temple is made mostly of gypsum, with some gold touches too. We don't really have that much gold in the fortress, but we are trying to get it done. Ideally, we'd have the entire thing made of gold, but... <laughs> Idrath hasn't blessed us that much. My goodness, maybe one day. We'll check back in on that shortly. Though while we're in the tower here, we're going to head up to Vabox Chambers right here. We're still getting the work done on them, as you can see. We're getting all the floors engraved, and we're going to get a nice uh, gypsum motif going here. Like his old chambers down in the mines. This one's going to be much, much better though, of course, obviously. We're making furniture, blocks for the floors. We're moving some of those gems from those windows downstairs up to here. It's going to be nice. It's about damn time too. The guy deserves a real nice place of his own, wouldn't you say? And actually, if we move up one level here, we could see our King Athel's quarters. Isn't that nice? A large, solid iron level all to his own. Well, him and the queen, of course. They got a masterwork bed in there. And, well, I mean, everything's made of iron. Everything. And yes, there's that platinum door, too. More than suitable for our king's needs. He still needs a tomb, but, I mean, come on, look at this. Just beautiful. And those clear glass windows. Suitable for any king, to be sure. And just as an additional note here, it is two levels tall. Nice and spacious. And above that, it just kind of caps off. We have to do something up here, though, eventually. Not sure what. Maybe we should revisit that bell idea that we <laughs> pitched at the beginning and then never touched again. An iron bell might be cool. I guess I was thinking this whole time it should be platinum, but there's no reason for that, I suppose. Iron quarters, iron bell. Makes total sense. Yeah, we're going to put some thought into that, but its fruition is quite a ways off, I do believe. We'll get there, though. However, it looks like we have to hold on a second here, getting a notification from down below, where a vile force of darkness has arrived, seeking a parlay. Okay, all right, you rat bastards. I assume this is gonna be the same as last time, and apparently they're not dissuaded at all about these piles of fly and elf corpses out here. Very, very stupid. But you know, as much as I hate to admit it, I think it's gonna work out in their favor once again because we have to parlay. We don't really have a choice in this matter. I will explain why shortly, but let's just get this out of the way. Hopefully this goes as smoothly as it did last time. Okay, let's see what they want. Well, once again, these goblins of the circular terror wish to parlay in order to avert loss of life. We will approve. And so we have our mayor, Bombrack, heading out once again to meet with the goblins. She is awfully brave for doing this. I'm just hoping everything goes smoothly again. And I'm hoping their demands aren't too over the top either. Could end up being pretty nasty. Good luck, Bomrek. <sighs> okay. The goblin crossbow man, Lim Aneleth, meets with our mayor, Bomrek Kozalir, and they claim the umbral frill is the property of their people, and they ask us to pass that treasure into their possession. Okay, sure. Another of our artifacts down the drain. But if we can prevent any loss of life, then it's probably for the best. Yeah, there are an awful lot of goblins out there, by the way. They would give us some real trouble if we tried to fight them. Uh, we had to kind of shuffle up our military a bit. I had mentioned that a few of them were pretty upset lately. And having a look at their moods, they were in a pretty foul state. And so we went through and picked out the worst, most miserable warriors that we had. And there were seven of them who were just in a haggard mindset. Seven of them. Seven of the ten salt bridge dwarfs, I should say. And that includes Croaks. That includes the Skewer Brother. And that included Frog Stomp as well. Those seven haggard dwarves we took out of the military. They're not in there anymore. And they're all retired. I figure it's for the best. We had removed the Stab Brother earlier. I think it was last year at some point, And he's already improving. He hasn't thrown a tantrum or anything recently. So I'm hoping the others improve shortly as well. They should. Anywho, we had to find new recruits to go in the place of those retired dwarves. Seven brand new recruits. And they just got put in the squad. So that's why we can't fight those goblins right now. 
They have good gear, but they don't know what the hell they're doing yet. This time, with the new recruits, what we did was uh, kind of put them through a little test. We took a look at all of our angry military dwarves and all the still happy ones. There was Moses, the leader of the Saltbridge squad, who's a happy and optimistic dwarf. There was Curse Crag, who apparently seeks out stressful situations. And then there was Ast, who we haven't seen much of. They can handle stress pretty darn well. So we made sure to pick out new recruits who could kind of do the same. We made sure all the new recruits that we put into the squad could handle stress. And so hopefully that doesn't happen again. Also, we put on a staggered training routine. So from now on, all our dwarves are going to be training for three months, then be off for three months. Training for three, off for three. And hopefully that'll prevent them from getting too, too stressed. I guess we'll see. But my hopes are high. Anywho, okay, it looks like Bomrek has grabbed the treasure and is heading over to the goblins now. There you have it, you ratty bastards. Yeah, they took it. And they're heading out. Good riddance to you. It is a shame that that happens, but it is good that we don't have to lose any dwarves over it. And we could have too. We could have lost a, quite a few dwarves. We make enough artifacts here where doing something like that isn't much of a problem. For now anyways. One day when we have a tougher military, maybe we can do something about those bastards taking our artifacts. But for now, this is a fine situation, I suppose. Thank you once again, Bombrek. Your bravery is appreciated. Anyways, okay. The goblins are out of here. Time to get back on track. We have some frog situation down in the underground here getting that wiped away no problem not gonna spend much time on it good riddance you bastards no problems and you know while we're in the area here maybe we should just talk about it real quick so this area between our three main underground gates used to be pretty cluttered if you remember and it's you know it's still not the prettiest but well at all times because we're located under the sea here there's water flowing in from the walls and it's been collecting up. So we kind of use the center of this area here as a big lake and water has been collecting in there. And if we move down a little bit here, you can see this water doesn't, it's not, well, it's not allowed to collect up and fill. We have this little solution over to the west where you can see a bit of a drain blocked off by some vertical iron bars. And that leads down here to our mines where we have a nice big spacious area. We have a lot of water flowing down here too, but there's enough space in here where it can kind of just spread out and dissipate over time. Hasn't been a problem. What is a problem, however, is our hospital, which is still located in this horrible wet area. We got to do something about that, don't we? We'll add it to this year's mini project list. Anywho, dwarves, how we feeling? Oh, <laughs> having a look at the drink stockpiles, probably not too great. Uh, I suppose that's what happens when you rely on forest forageables and trade for your drinks. Uh, that's going to damage the dwarves' moods. But luckily, it looks like the humans have just arrived to trade. That's good. Maybe we can scrape up something from them. We're going to have to at this point. Going too long without proper drinks. And you know, actually, might have something that could help us out in this situation. I just heard tell that we had a new artifact made here in the fortress. Moldath Birdurel, a miller, has created Tenturel Emetigal, a pine puzzle box. He offers it to the wealthy order. Thank you very much, my friend. Its name translates to Tickle Arms, the Fresh Trap, and it's worth 21300 Very nice. A pine puzzle box. All craft dwarfship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with round pyrite cabochons, studded with platinum, and encircled with bands of steel, alpaca wool, marquee cut shorals, and bismuth bronze. This object is adorned with hanging rings of mule leather and menaces with spikes of fungi wood. On the item is an image of Athel Great Tours, our king who lives here in the fortress, and he is surrounded by dwarves, an image relating to his ascension in the year 99. Wonderful. Oh, and there's also an image of tunnel tubes in pine on it. Very cool, intricate, beautiful. We'll have to try our best to not get attached because I figure what we can do with this one here is not be greedy with it. I mean, hell, we've already given those damn goblins two of our artifacts. What we're gonna do with this one here is part ways with it. We're going to trade it to the humans, which will surely be seen as a grand gesture from us, the dwarves of Northbridge, to our treasured allies, the humans of the Empire of Dales. It will strengthen our bonds immensely. It's the least we could do. And in a more utilitarian sense, it's going to score us a lot of trade items, which we do need right now. Drinks. Again. But also, we did request a whole hell of a lot of cut gems last year, so hopefully they brought those too. Yeah, we're going to make a killing this year, all in the name of Idrath and Northbridge. We are going down in the Tomes of Legend. That much, I can guarantee. And there we go. That's going to just about do it right there. And yes, it was an excellent trade. We parted ways with our artifact, Tickle Arms, the puzzle box, which the humans were greatly, greatly appreciative of. And on top of that, we also got rid of a lot of elven equipment, which the humans showed some interest in. The uh, wooden armor and weapons that the elves brought. I don't know why the humans want that stuff, but well, it's to our benefit. And in turn for all that, we got a ton, ton, ton of cut gems, which we're already getting in place for windows. And also a lot of drinks too, an awful lot of drinks. 
In fact, it solves our drink problems for now. As you can tell, I'm sure. Yeah, look at that, will ya? Pretty darn good. Our stout allies, the humans, coming through for us time and again. Gotta love them. Oh, and actually, as another bit of good news, we have another artifact on the way already. And it's another child, too, who's creating it. Rigoth claimed to craft dwarf workshop out on the shore, and he's just collecting pieces, so we'll be able to easily replace that puzzle box. You keep at it there, big boy. We'll check back in in a bit. Also, I should note that in the meantime, we've been getting some projects done around the fortress, too. Here I'm saying that we're going to take a nice, easy, relaxed year, but seems like we're getting antsy halfway through. Like, notice, as the humans are leaving here across the bridge, you can see this nice design we've put down, like we had installed on the western side years ago. Yes, we finally got around to it, and it's looking pretty good. Glad to finally get around to that. We're like up over this way here. You can see our guild tower is coming right along. All cleaned up now, we got walls in place, and the tower is accessed from this stairway here right in the middle. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. Okay, here's our tower, and if we move up, you can see we have a nice bauxite block roof up above. Kind of slants inwards and then caps off, it's not too tall. And we might end up putting something else up here too. Not 100% sure what yet though. Anyways, if we move down below the top level here, you can see we're finishing up some of the upper levels of the tower. When we started putting the floors in place, we were completely out of rock blocks, so we instead opted to use wood, which we have an awful lot of. I'm not sure if I'm loving it though. It's too flashy. Might end up covering it with some more modest stone, you know? All this wooden flare doesn't really scream wealth to me, but knowing that the stone floors are being supported by the dead bodies of trees which the elves adore is really going to add something special to this whole tower, I think. Anyways, moving down, you can see we've done a couple levels like this with the concentric rings of colored wood. We're on the third level now, that one's almost finished, but then below that, we got some wide open space. Quite a few levels of that too. We're going to need an awful lot of stone to get this thing completely done, but we are working on it. It's almost ready to be utilized. Backing out of the guild tower now, back to this entry tunnel, and moving up a space, you can see the floor above. This whole U-shape here is going to be used for food storage now. And actually, I was considering putting the kitchens back there too, making them a bit more private, you know? I'm not sure. We might do that, but first we have to get this windmill out of the way. We only built it here to test the wind out in the sea, to see how efficient it would be for a power source. And sure enough, it is quite efficient. The wind's blowing very hard out here, which is going to be excellent because we have a need for it now. Moving southward to the other side of the bridge, you can see these two narrow walkways leading off the main bridge body. These here are going to be used for pumps, water pumps, to get the seawater up above. This is the top level of it. And if we move down just a little bit here, the idea is going to be to get the water to flow down next to the meeting hall here so that the mist from the water will kind of splash out into the meeting hall but then continue downwards just a couple levels down to here right above the sea where we're going to build a bit of a cistern where that water once it has been run through the pumps will become clean water uh fresh water clean fresh water so at that point we'll have a nice fresh water cistern down here we can connect up a couple wells to it don't have to go down in the mines if we ever have a need for water anymore that would be nice but then moving back up to this level right here, you can see this construction down here to the south. This long building over here is on top of that tunnel that leads down underground. We're going to have to build some more supports down there, obviously, at some point. But you can see we have this nice gem corridor over here leading over to it. And this is going to be a hospital, much more accessible, nice and spacious. And we did it this way because we're going to have that cistern down below somewhere. And I'd like for there to be at least two wells here in the hospital so that our doctors can just get nice clean water into the hospital when they need to clean wounds and stuff, you know? It'll be much nicer than that terrible muddy mine hospital we have going right now. It's getting there. Having a look back up over here to the bridge, we have a minor nuisance underway. A couple goblins tried to run in, but they're being chased off, no problem whatsoever. That's right, get the hell out of here. Rather, I guess they're coming back in. <laughs> Foolish. This poor bastard bleeding all over the place. Yeah, bit of a mess. And I just saw this one over here too, this goblin, walking very slowly down the beach. What's your deal? Oh dear god. They have Rigoth, the child in a bag. Rigoth was making an artifact out on the beach, remember? Uh, can we get someone out here? Really quick, please. Really quick. Quicker. There we go. There we go. Okay. <laughs> okay, excellent. There you go, Rigoth. Get out of here. Go back to making that artifact. That was a close call there, kid. Good job, Irvad. And double good job there, Rigoth. For not losing your cool. Actually, I think he's panicking right now. But I'm hoping he resumes making his artifact. He should. You know, kid like you, I think you deserve a bit of a nickname. Gotta be warranted. And so from now on, the dwarves will call you... Lead rump. Not flattering, but it's that lead-like rump that saved his rump. And sometimes names just stick. <laughs> Good luck, Rigoth. Curious to see what you come out with. 
We're going to give him an extra second with that. And while we're down here underground, there is something I would like to note. It's a bit of a uncomfortable reality, really. But we here at Northbridge have been extremely lucky so far. In more ways than one, of course, but the way I'm referring to right now is with visitors from the underground. And I'm not talking troglodytes or crundles or naked mole dogs, anything like that. I'm talking about the beasts. Usually at this point in a fortress's life, we would expect to see at least one or two of the things. But we've had no direct contact with any so far. But my dwarves, we are not alone here. That much I know. I had mentioned earlier there was a bit of a disturbance. Rumblings somewhere out there. Years ago at this point, I think. But recently it happened again. And with those rumblings came the smell of flames, burning flesh even. Cries unlike anything we've ever heard before here in Northbridge. Terrifying, really. It's only a matter of time now before we come face to face with one of those things. We just have to hope we can be ready for whatever it is. And we will be. Idrath willing. Idrath, what the hell? Go figure. A forgotten beast. The forgotten beast Amas Intakonol has come. An enormous, three-eyed tarantula. It has a stubby horn and it has a bloated body. Its silver exoskeleton is rough and cracked. Beware its poisonous bite. It's over here on this fire-blasted island, separate from the fortress, but I'm curious to see if it'll climb or maybe swim in. What the hell's going on? We see an amphibian man here. Oh. There's amphibian men stalking this island as well. They're invisible, though, in ambush, probably waiting for our dwarves. This beast here snuck up behind him, but they took it down. That is incredible. Didn't think those little bastards had it in them. That being said, I don't know how many amphibian people are on this island. They're keeping very well concealed. We don't have a way to this particular section of cavern, but maybe we can work our way over there at some point. It might be worth it to check it out. Of course, while we're over here, this fire-blasted hunk of land. Strange, right? Well... Have a look over here. It's another beast. It looks like this one was made of salt. It's dead as well. Taken down by the amphibian people, I assume. Yeah, those guys are a lot tougher than we've given them credit for. I guess. I guess in some fashion we're in their debt. As long as the beasts keep popping up over here, then I'd say there's a pretty solid chance they'll get taken down by the frogs. Oh man, you know, we got another one over here too. Just floating dead in this water. I wonder how many of those frogs are down here in the water. I wonder how good of an idea it would be to try to drain the caverns out at some point. Maybe make it so those frogs can't get in here anymore. Or at least make it less comfortable for them. Around our immediate fortress, that is. Well, anyways. Stay wary, dwarves. Those beasts are out there and those frogs can't protect us all the time. <laughs> Thank you once again, you amphibious bastards. Anywho, moving back to the fortress now, where we have a touch of good news. Ledrum Laganalath, the dwarven child, has created Erlin Bouquet a limonite bracelet. He offers it to the wealthy order. Wonderful. Let's have a closer look. Its name translates to high quickness. Probably not to how quickly he was able to run away from those goblins. <laughs> and it is worth 24,000, which is quite a good amount. Excellent, my friend. This is a limonite bracelet. All craftsmanship is of the highest quality. It is encircled with bands of oval limonite cabochons and rose-cut tiger eyes. This object menaces with spikes of limonite, alpaca bone, pine, Rubicel and tiger eye. On the item is an image of Count Vabok, as well as some moon snails and steel. Vabok is surrounded by the moon snails. Oh, that's a fun little touch right there. Vabok, um, Vabok's known to hate moon snails, so <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure why the kid chose to put that on there exactly, but we got your prerogative. You know, you know I wonder if Vabok is the one who kind of coined the nickname there for Lead Rump. <laughs> that would make sense. Uh, also, on the item is an image of cedars in alpaca leather. Wonderful, wonderful work. Thank you very much there, Lead Rump. Once again, very happy that you didn't get stolen away by the goblins. That would have just ruined our day. Now, get back to the fortress, you little bastard. Those goblins can come back at any moment. 
Ah, uh, Northbridge. Quite a fortress. And I have to say, it's really coming into its own these days. Obviously. Surely of all the world's fortresses, we shine the brightest in Idrath's glorious light. Wealth is bestowed upon us, and that blessing will continue. At this point, that much is assured. Rest well now, dwarves, for tomorrow we continue our work. And with that, my bearded bastards, we're going to do that fun, fun transition into talking about some behind the scenes things. And this time it's Sans Cliffhanger. <laughs> I did think we were going to have one, too, with that Forgotten Beast showing up so late in the episode. But, you know, amphibian men, they took care of it for us. I have known about the Forgotten Beasts popping up, obviously. I, as the player, get these messages, but, like, it doesn't really feel appropriate to show them off at the moment sometimes. So, figured we'd bide our time, do a little reveal like that, that we've been, in fact, getting attacked. And actually, on that same token right there, I had done that whole spiel about Forgotten Beasts during this episode right here talking about how they're bound to attack at some point, and that Forgotten Beast did attack us, like, right after that. I mean, what's the chance there? Didn't, like, set that up or anything, you know? I thought it was pretty cool. You know, I've said it before, and I'm gonna say it again. This fortress here has to be one of my favorite fortresses. You know, I'm not one to toot my own horn, but I think I did a pretty darn good job on it. I think I'm still doing a pretty good job on it, especially with this episode here. I felt like it was kind of slow for a bit, but then when I took a step back and looked at the whole place, you know, I started to kind of appreciate how much went into it exactly, I guess. You know, we got the hospital now, we got that whole guild tower over there. Actually, we've come a lot farther on both those things, and I didn't even show it off in the episode, but that's that's fine. We're going to show it off next episode, or maybe you're seeing it here in the background during the credits. I haven't recorded that bit of footage yet. Regardless, yeah, having a lot of fun with this fortress. You know, I thought the slower pace of these episodes coming out, you know, bi-weekly now, that people would kind of like fall off the wagon sooner or something like that, but I don't know. It's just good to see so many excited people down in the comments, you know? It feels nice to make a higher quality product too. And that paired with my wrangling of my work schedule, man, I'll tell you, I'm just in a good place these days. And I say that truthfully too, it's not a lie, like, I've told you many times in the past, I'm doing pretty good. Got a good schedule. I'm happy with the quality of my work. It's only taken me seven years to get to that point with this shtick. But, you know, I guess I couldn't be here without those seven years preceding it, huh? Ooh, hey, uh, before I ramble on too much about stupid pointless things, one thing I'd like to touch on that's not really video related here is, well, I expected to see a lot more Dwarf Fortress content creators pop out of the woodwork with the Steam release here. But, you know, there really hasn't been a lot. Hardly any new Dwarf Fortress content creators, actually. Or excuse me, rather I should say, not a lot of edited content creators. I was really kind of hoping to see more. That kind of bugs me. One of the new ones I have seen is Hoodie Hair. Go check out their channel, it's some pretty good stuff. But like, other than Hoodie, I really haven't seen that much. And it's a shame, I know there are people out there watching right now who have considered maybe making Dwarf Fortress videos. I have people ask me questions about it every once in a while. I want to encourage you to do it. Just do it. If you're thinking about it, that is. Like, a lot of the content for Dwarf Fortress out there right now is just kind of like live stream type of stuff, you know? Like, it's someone sitting there recording and then taking that raw footage and pretty much just putting it on YouTube, which, you know, some people like that, that's fine. And, you know, thinking about it, I have seen a lot of edited stuff too, but it's all very, like, meme -y sort of stuff. And again, you know, that's fine if you enjoy that sort of stuff. But I gotta wonder, where are the stories? That's what Dwarf Fortress is about, damn it. I was really hoping to see more of that kind of stuff. You know, if you're thinking about doing it, I would encourage you to record your stuff, get a simple editing program. I record using Action, exclamation mark, that's the name of the program. Action, it's a stupid name, I don't know. And I, well, I edit using Movie Studio Platinum 15. It's a piece of garbage program, I wouldn't recommend it. But it's what I know. Get yourself a decent mic. You can get like a Yeti Blue Snowball thing, whatever it's called, off of like eBay for 20 bucks. That's what I started with, it's fine. It doesn't have to be anything too fancy. Record yourself playing the game and just like cut out all of the, the middle stuff, you know, like when you're not talking and stuff. Like, a lot of the videos, there's a lot of silence and, and whatnot, or just a lot of talking about dull things. You know, think about what you would like to watch, I guess. Make content like that. That's how I started. What would I like to watch? Or what would I be willing to watch, I suppose? I don't think if I was an outsider, I'd like my videos very much, honestly. I'd rather be playing, but, you know, just trying to look from the outside in, you know? Record yourself playing, edit up the audio, focus on the audio, really. And that's pretty much it. Clip it up into a nice, you know, uh, a bite-sized episode when you get down to it. You know, maybe 20 minutes, maybe a half hour. And maybe down the line, you could start adding in other things. A lot of the new people I get 
asking me about how to make Dwarf Fortress content have all these grand ideas, and I don't blame you. I'm sorry if I put that in your head. If you watch my videos and you th think you could just, you know, come out the gates swinging like that, it's taken me a long time to get to this point where I know what I'm doing well enough in order to, like, put it all in play. But if you look at my earlier videos, they're garbage. Like, a lot of people like them. You know, I'm not gonna knock you. I appreciate you watching my older videos. I wouldn't be able to do these current videos without people watching my older videos, but, like, if you look at the quality level, they ain't nothing. It's just me playing the game and cutting up the audio, pretty much. <laughs> it's simple. Just, you know, baby steps. If you try to take on too much right out the gate, chances are you're gonna be overwhelmed, you know? Not gonna know where all the pieces should fit. You might get frustrated, and I wouldn't blame you. I'd feel the exact same way. And really, I guess that goes with anything in life. Starting something new, just take it slow. Feel it out. And then maybe at some point down the line, you can make it into something bigger. I think you could do it. And of course, as always, this goes for everyone. If you have any questions or want any feedback or anything like that, you can just send me an email over at krugsmash at gmail.com or reach out to me on Discord. I'm on there a lot. I'd be glad to help. Anyways, my bearded bastards, I don't know how much I rambled on about that just then. Hopefully it wasn't too, too much. But wrapping it up now, I thank you very much for watching. I certainly hope you enjoyed yourselves. And I double certainly hope to see you next time here in Idrath Core. I roll Sazir Northbridge. And until then, you bearded bastards.